Welcome back. In this video, we're going to ask you to be able to recognize the graphs of some commonly used parent functions and then use vertical and horizontal shifts to sketch graphs of the function. So we're not going to be setting up tables of values and plotting points, but we're just going to, to shift the graph vertically and horizontally. Below are some diagrams in the list of the commonly used functions. So hopefully you're familiar with linear functions, uh, y equals x. Uh, the absolute value function is this v-shaped function, uh, y or f of x equals the absolute value of x. The square root function, the quadratic function, that graph of a parabola. And uh, those of you that have seen before, maybe we I've called this Joe parabola, kind of the generic parabola or our base parabola. Okay, our cubic function has kind of the, the uh, as we go through the origin, it seems to level off. And then our rational function. And we'll be graphing rational functions uh, later on in chapter two. So you're gonna wanna be familiar with those, uh, those graphs, those basic graphs, and those particular functions. So what are we gonna do to these functions? How are we gonna transform them? Well, one thing you need to be able to recognize is kind of the standard form uh, of each of these, which is listed above, uh, and then how we're gonna change those. So here we have a quadratic function, and we have the quantity x plus one squared versus over here we have a quadratic function where we just have x squared plus one. So these are, are different, and we want you to be able to recognize the differences. So the, the quantity x plus one squared might be the quantity x plus one squared plus zero, okay? versus our g of x over here is more of uh, x plus 0 squared plus 1. So those are different when the we've got something in the quantity and not. So our standard form here really would be x minus a minus 1. So in this first example here on the left hand side this is gonna be a shift along the x-axis. So we're shift on the x-axis. Okay, and I kind of memorized that by, well, I'm grouped with the x here, so I'm gonna shift on the x-axis, minus a minus one. I'm gonna end up shifting opposite of what I'm looking at. So this is actually one unit left. So we're gonna shift one unit in the negative direction. Shift one unit to the left. Our standard parabola. The zero means we're not gonna shift any units up or down. So we'll talk about that when I do g of x. So if we shift one unit to the left, using a different color than what I have, all we're going to do is take our standard parabola, move it one unit to the left, and then replot that. Okay, so with a one unit left, it's going to look something like that. So our red diagram there. So I've taken that Joe parabola, and I've just moved him one unit to the left. Keep my T on left there. Whereas in G of X equals X squared plus one, this is gonna be a vertical shift. And we're gonna shift, in this case, we're gonna shift one unit up, okay? One unit up. So that's gonna take our, our Joe parabola, and instead of being at the origin, it, the vertex here is going to be at positive one. So we just shifted one unit up. So that's all we've done there. In a similar fashion, our absolute value function works the same way. So we have the absolute value of x minus three plus zero. This is gonna be, a again, a horizontal shift 
and we're going to shift this case. Now, this is x minus a positive 3. We're going to shift 3 units to the right. So we're going to take our graph. We're just going to shift it 1, 2, 3 units to the right. And it's going to be the exact same shape, exact same size, but just 3 units to the right. Versus f of x equals the absolute value of x minus 3. This is the absolute value of x minus 0 minus 3. So when it was plus 1 here above, we shifted 1 unit up. So now we're going to shift 3 units down. We would take that same absolute value function. Now we're just going to have the exact same shape, but it's 3 units down. Probably not my finest absolute value function there, but you get the idea. And then finally, our, our cubic function has got to get that swirl in the middle as it comes through the origin. And we've got x minus positive 2 cubed plus 0. So we're going to shift this 2 units to the right. So negative 2, we see negative 2 in the original maybe. We think, oh, that's going to be a a shift in the negative direction, but it's not. So this is going to be two units to the right. This becomes my new origin, if you will. And then I've got my cubic function that I just sketched the graph. Same shape, just two units to the right. x cubed minus 2, so our minus 2 is not inside the cube here. So this again is like x minus 0 cubed minus 2. So with the negative, the 3 units down above, we're going to do 2 units down. So we'll just shift this 2 units down. It becomes our new origin. And our cubic is going to look something like that. So we've got a couple sample problems down here. You can see here we've got textbook information about vertical shifts, okay, f of x plus or minus c, okay, outside of the quantity is our vertical shift up and down, and inside the quantity is our shifts left and right. So sketch a graph of each function, I think I'll do this first one in red, I've got my standard x cubed here, I've already done that one in black, okay. So x cubed plus 3, so it's x plus 0 cubed plus 3. So all we're going to do is shift this 3 units up. So 1, 2, 3 units up. And then we have our graph of our cubic function. It will look something like that. I've shifted 3 units up. The second one, it looks like we've got a couple shifts here. The minus a positive 3 is going to be shift 3 units to the right. And 4 units up. Or a vertical shift in our horizontal shift. So 3 units to the right, 4 units up. So here's my new origin, and my graph is going to look something like that. So that is the summary of vertical and horizontal shifts on some of our particular parent functions. And you'll get some more practice with that when I see you in class.